Hi guys, welcome back. Um, in this new series, I'm going to continue from what we started in Clo 3D last time with the jacket that we created. Um, I'm going to show you how we can pose this using Daz to create some avatars and poses, and then bring everything into Blender for some final renders. Um, and this is the outcome of that workflow that you can see right here. Um, we've got some nice um, high quality renders here in the end of the jacket that we created in the previous series brought together as a look inside Blender uh, some of the details here that we brought through from the clo file and I'll show you as well how to set up the avatar from um, inside Daz and bring all of that into Blender in the end um, to start off with we're going to look today at Daz and Blender uh, at Daz and clo 3D and then in the next part we're going to look at working in Blender um, so for now let's go to Daz. Um, this is my character that I've created inside Daz. Um, he's got hair, eyelashes, eyebrows, and shoes applied to him inside Daz. Um, they're all visible in the outline on the side here. So when you guys have created a character that you like, um, get into a pose that you want to have as your final pose for your garments. Um, I can now explain how we're going to tr do this this transition inside um, Clo. Um, the first thing you want is to save any poses that we're going to work with. So if you select your avatar on the side, let's say we've got into this pose inside Daz, we like this pose, choose your character in the outliner, go to file, save as, and then go to pose, and then type in the name of your pose, I'll call this standing three, and click save. It will save from the current frame only, or you can select a range of poses to use, but we just want to use the current frame here and from this one character. So leave these settings as they are and click accept. And that will now have saved out a pose preset for us to, to work with um, at a later point. Um, if you want to work with existing poses, so this is uh, some poses from a library that I, I bought in the Daz store. So choose your character, um, choose one of the poses that we like, say this one. Um, I'll leave the limits on so that we don't get any strange, um, like, stretching of the, the joints. Um, and then you can then adapt these poses further using this kind of, this gizmo up here. So, you know, make the poses that you want to work with for each outfit. Um, I'm going to go back to the pose I had before. So if I look in my folder, um, I will look under... Daz in the pose files, I had standing two and standing three, so I'll reload this one. Just drag the pose file that you saved out here, and then your avatar will go back into that pose. So that's how you can create poses, modify poses, and then save these poses. But these files that we're creating are only going to work inside Daz. Um, what I've got here is um, T poses and A pose as well. So to do a T pose, choose your character. Um, I'm going to use this preset here that will just zero out all the pose and take it into a T pose, and then you can do the same. Choose your character in the outline or on the side. Go to File, Save As, and then go to Pose Preset, and then just save all those presets in here, and they will all save as this kind of DSON uh, user file for um, a DAS project. So when you've done a pose t pose whatever you want um you like i said you can always load these back in so again i've got an a pose here just to show you guys this is the a pose these are all useful to work with inside clo when you're creating garments so i like to start on a t pose when i'm modeling the garment to start off with then transition to this a pose and then finally transition into the um actual pose for the, the render i'm working with in the end um to export these, we want to um, only export the character. We don't want to export the hair and the shoes and everything. We don't want to bring all that inside Clo. We just want the shape of the avatar. So in the outliner on the side right here, you want to turn off the visibility for everything that's not the avatar. So for the eyebrows, the shoes, the hairdo, and the eyelashes, um, these will now all be hidden and these won't be included in any exports that we make. Um, so that's important for working inside Clo because we don't want these to interact with the garments at all. We just want them. Um, we just want the avatar as a, as a collider to work with. So here now, in the outliner, select the avatar again, 
and go to file um, export and then we're going to use the obj format um, i've already exported my three poses so this one is the a pose so if i type in here a pose and click save um, we will go into the options window here in general you can leave all this exactly as it is the thing to be aware of at this point is scaling so we want one unit is one centimeter so 100 percent scaling um, this is the DAS scaling and this is the same scale we work with in Clo because Clo uses one unit as one centimeter as well so this you can leave and then just click accept and then it will create the, the file for you there then go back to your folder um, go to standing change the pose here and then again go to file export type the name of your avatar in here so I'm going to call it standing go with three um, again leave the settings as they are and click accept I don't really need to do this again because I already exported the T pose the A pose and the standing pose so now I have three files to work with inside Clo. Um, so when you've done this you should in the end have three obj files and three files that you can use to um, repose your avatar inside um, daz um, we now want to import all of this into clo to work with um, so let's go over to clo um, this is the jacket i made in the last series so if you guys want to learn how to make this jacket i'll put a link in the description for you to follow the instructions on how to set up um, this bomber jacket um, what I do have here is the bomber jacket is set into a look. So if I hide the visibility of the jacket, just select the pattern pieces and press shift and Q on the keyboard to hide, to, to toggle the visibility. Um, you'll see I've got a t-shirt underneath this jacket and then a pair of jeans over the top of the t-shirt. So the t-shirt's tucked in. So this is my whole look right now. Um, the way this is working and the reason that these garments are actually bright green is because of the way the layer system works. So if I select the jacket and I look at layer one, at layer, this is set to layer one. If I set this back to zero, my materials will come back as they were correctly set before. Um, it's not changing my materials, it's just identifying that this is set to a different layer. So if I set this to layer one, this will now become green. And the same for the t-shirt underneath, this is set to layer minus two. So if I set this to minus one, this will now sit underneath the trousers because the trousers are set to layer zero. So minus one goes underneath and plus one, one goes over the top. So the jacket is set with the layering to go over the top of the t-shirt and over the top of the pants. So that's how we set up like a nice layering system, I guess, inside Clo to make this all simulate in separate layers and not all kind of push into one big um, problem. Um, but this is all modeled out and set up in T-Pose. And like I said, I want to transition into these other poses that I've got now. So the way to import these into um, Clo is quite simply to just drag and drop. So I'm going to go to my um, avatar folder right here. And if you need to bring in the base avatar to work with, so say the T-Pose, just click the T-Pose OBJ file and then drag and drop this into um, the the field right here okay um it will give you this import obj option and you want to go to add and you want to select avatar as the type you want to import i'm not going to import because obviously i already have this avatar in the scene with my clothing on it but this is how you can import the obj as an avatar and you see here this is set to centimeters das studio 100 percent. so this we know is the same settings we used inside das so this is going to work absolutely fine for us right here um, what we can do now though is transition these poses from uh, from this T pose into the A pose. So if I take the A pose, for example, I drag the A pose OBJ into the workspace here and I go to add and instead of going to object type avatar, I choose morph target. And this will now transition this avatar into the next pose. And it will do it with 25 frames of transition because that's the number I've got inserted here. I could have more and less. Um, because we're not going from two very extremely different poses, it's fine to use about 25 frames. Um, I'm going to click OK and then this will load the OBJ file. 
and it will now transition the jacket from one pose to the next pose. So you see now he's putting his arms down and his feet together. This is because um, the moth targets have worked and he is transitioning the pose. Um, this is working quite okay because again, this is set into layers. So the jacket is simulating on top of everything else. And when the 25 frames are up, the simulation will stop and he's now in the A pose. Um, we can go all the way through into the actual standing pose now because we don't want to make any more changes to the garment. So if I take the standing pose that we exported from Daz and I drag this into here, again, go to add and then to morph target. And then again, I've got 25 frames of transition. I could change this down to 20, for example, and it might do a little bit quicker. Um, if it's too small, the frames will be too jumpy and you you won't have a nice transition. But I think 20 is fine for what, what we're doing right here. Um, after 20 frames, it'll stop simulating like there. And now we are in the standing pose that I want to use for the render in the end. Um, the one thing I do like to do is just select everything right click and choose strengthen and just re-simulate the garments a bit with the strengthen applied so they kind of hang a little better on the body of the avatar now that it's moved um, they should kind of fill out a bit turn the simulation off select everything and then turn that strengthen off again and just let this simulate back down um, and this should just help settle down any collisions that might have happened and help things sit in the in a nice position okay so i'll turn the simulation off there and now we have the, our character posed here um one thing i will quickly explain at this point is if i look at this avatar if you're working in cyclone you want to make renders and you see in the workspace that your avatar's eyes are kind of white and disappeared um this is quite easy to fix if you zoom right in on the face, you see that the skin texture loaded in fine, but the eyes are not. So select the whites of the eyes and shift select the other eye. So now you should just have the outsides of the eye selected. You see this is kind of highlighted in yellow. If you then go to the property edit on the right side and go to the opacity option in the material for these eyes, you can just drag this down to zero. And then do the same for the the circle in the middle of the eye. So shift select both of these pieces of geometry for the eyes and then just drag down the opacity slider here. And now you'll be able to quite clearly see the the eyes inside your character right here. Um there's there's a reason for that and you'll you'll see when we get into Blender, but for, for now we just set this to opacity zero and we can see the eyes quite fine. Um at this point, we can set our collision layers all back to zero. So select everything and press zero, and now we see everything in the correct pose. Um, yeah, at this point, we've now kind of covered how to transition from one pose to another inside um, Clo. These poses are all created in DAZ and then exported as separate OBJs, and then we use the morph target um, transition to go from one pose to another. Um, in the next part, I'm going to show you how to export all of this into Blender um, and start to build the scene in Blender to create the renders in the end. Um, one thing we will do is work with some shape keys to have the jacket open and jacket closed so that we can transition the pose inside Blender and not have to come back into Clo if we want to make any changes to how the garment is posed. So I will see you guys inside um, Blender for the next video. Um, if you need to see how to make this jacket, like I said, I'll put a link in the description and you guys can go and make this jacket. Um, see you guys in the next part.